everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to cover basic recommender system with PyTorch. Recommender system is a very common use case in machine learning. Every time you go to Amazon, Spotify, Netflix, all the items being suggested to you are going through recommender system. So one of the most popular OG recommender system approach is this thing called collaborative filtering. So in this slide, uh, as you can see, collaborative filtering is basically given a set of user item interaction, you can populate this called co-occurrence matrix. And based on this, you can use uh, either mathematical approach or machine learning kind of estimation approach to fill up all these empty spots um, in, in this co-occurrence matrix. And from there, then you can answer uh, the question whether or not user will like uh, a given item. So for example, whether or not uh, user, uh, user D will like book or will like video game console. So it's essentially a, a way to kind of fill up these empty spots in the co-occurrence matrix. There are, typically, there are three ways to do this. Um, one of the uh, the famous two that are a little bit outdated are item CF and user CF. The idea is very similar. You basically generate a vector uh, for item based on how user interact with it, or generate um, a vector based on user of how it interacts with items, and then and then use that. You can basically find cosine similarity um, between items. Uh, for example, if you're using item CF, then the cosine similarity between items, and that's your recommend, recommendation list. Uh, uh, for user CF, that's similar. Um, today's focus is this, uh, this approach called matrix factorization. Uh, why do we need this approach? Because item CF and user CF are suffering from um, basically recommending only popular items because if an item is popular then it, when you plot the, the vectors of, of item uh, vector then it tend to cluster towards the popular item which you have a long tail of items or has less interaction with uh, users that don't get recommended so, so you will not get a very good recommendation result Matrix factorization um, actually is, uh, is applying linear algebra to, to solve that problem. So let's look at the next slide to see how it does that. So given this, the, the similar co-occurrence matrix, uh, in linear algebra, for example, this 4 times 4 matrix can be break into this um, 4 times 2 matrix multiply with this 2 times 4 matrix. So in so if you look at the on this side, for for user A, it's as almost as if it has an embedding embedding vector of uh, one point two as the first value, point A as the second value. So to get the uh, A's a preference score uh, uh, with item W, then you just need to have its embedding vector multiply by embedding vector of item W then you can get a score so that's how you mathematically solve uh, this co-occurrence matrix um, in, in some textbook what um, what this thing is instead of calling embedding which is a, a deep learning term is sometimes it's called a, a latent vector it means it's, it's a hidden vector of, of what user A prefer uh, what, or, or a hidden vector of what item W's uh, information in, uh, we derived from this co-occurrence matrix, we derive from this user item interaction events. So there are different ways to solve this. Um, there are ways to do it like purely mathematically. There are ways to do this in, in the traditional machine learning. Uh, we can also do this using, using deep learning 
Um, so the next slide is, is, is showing kind of how, how we do this in deep learning. This is, this is look, going to look very similar to the model we're going to define in a notebook. So here we have um, user embedding and item embedding. Um, instead of, for example, um, instead of having uh, embedding size as, as uh, vector size as two, like in the previous slides, here we're using, say, a length of 32 for user embedding and 32 for item embedding. And we generate these numbers, or it's initially randomly initialized. And then we concatenate them together so it becomes a length of 64 vector. And then we send them through a fully connected layer uh, and generate some sort of output. And that would be our prediction. And then from there, it's, it's the we would basically calculate the, the error, the loss, and then do the uh, backward uh, propagation, um, and then do gradient descent to slowly adjust some of these weights until we can get, uh, we can minimize the, the, the loss um, or the error, and then that's how we train the, the model, essentially how we train the weights in a fully connected layer as well as the, the weights in, in this uh, item user embedding. Um, this is called a direct lookup embedding. Embedding itself is a very big topic um, that I, I will cover in, on a separate video. But this is basically a direct lookup, meaning uh, each column, it, it basically, or you can say each row refers to that embedding. So it's a direct lookup based on the user ID or movie ID. So in terms of data sets, uh, we're going to use this very famous movie lens data sets. Um, I, I put the, the link here that, that uh, you can download. And we're going to use this uh, the smaller size that has 9,000 9, unique movies and 6,000 uh, unique users. And it has user ID. So each, each row basically has user ID, movie ID, and the, uh, the actual rating. And our job is to predict, um, our job is to predict the, uh, the user's preference and then, uh, or the predictive rating, and then based on that, right, we, we sort it uh, in descending order, and that would be our recommendation for, for that user. So now let's jump into the code. So here, I already have the notebook set up, so you guys don't have to watch me type each of the, the cells, uh, but I'm going to walk through uh, each cell and, and make, you know, make sure everything is, is clear and easy to understand. So to start with, uh, we import all the libraries that we need. And then this, this row, this line is just to say, um, if you're using GPU, it will basically give you a GPU processing. Otherwise, it's CPU. Um, here, we're reading the, the readings.csv, which has the user movie uh, and then the rating, the, that data. So, Let's go through the, the schema. Um, yeah, like I said, the user movie rating timestamp. Here we don't worry about timestamp, um, but I think other uh, other models that might have, you know, based on the sequential interaction, the timestamp may may be uh, uh, information. Here we're not using it, so we're looking at user ID, movie ID, and then here we're looking at the value distribution of how many people did four, three, five, uh, to see if we have a, uh, any like, sort of uh, class imbalance. And then we look at the overall shape of data. It's um, this uh, 100,000 rows with uh, four columns. So here I'm creating this uh, class data set class wrapper. And uh, the reason we're doing so is that later on we can use PyTorch data loader to, to do batch training or batch processing. Um, so here you, you initialize the users and movies and ratings. Uh, each of them is basically should be should have the length of however many rows it has. So if I just push this data frame directly into data set, then, then it will give me this 10,836 rows. Uh, and then here I'm, I'm overriding this uh, length function, this and length function, and this um, get item function, so that when I call, uh, for example, here if I call len um, movie data set, then it will return the the movie the the length overall length, 
And here, similarly, if I do movie data set uh, one, then it will return the uh, the information or the the item at the uh, index uh, the position one, uh, similar to this. So. So here we create a model similar to this is corresponding to the this uh, this diagram. So we have user embedding of the number of unique users, and each user has thirty two uh, length of thirty two vectors. And similarly for for movie, it's the same. And then we concatenate them right into a vector uh, for each user movie interaction. We concatenate them into a um, a vector of length 64 and we want the output to just be one we just want the score so and then here's how we define a forward path we basically say given this users uh, what's my embedding what's my user embedding move and then similarly for movie embeddings and then I want to concatenate these two um, at the dimension one of the second dimension and I'll explain what that means it basically means I want to concatenate on this vector like 32 32 and make it 64 and then here I'm I'm basically sending the two through this uh, linear layer or sometimes called fully connected layer and now generate the output so here I'm doing a little bit pre-processing here um, I'm, I'm using this uh, scikit-learn label encoder and the reason is that for example if user ID Say if we have a hundred different user ID, but if the range goes anywhere above a hundred, then we'll have out of index out of bound issue when we try to do the direct lookup on, on these embeddings, right? Because embeddings, if we say we have a hundred unique user, and I say I want, um, I want user one o five, then it doesn't have that, but. Um, that that's that's the reason why we're doing this um, pre-processing transformation to make sure that um, each user ID fits into um, the 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 length of total unique user ID. So that's what this is, and then here uh, I'm basically uh, doing a a training validation split. Uh, just a small note here, I'm not using validation set for cross-validation, so just treat validation set here as, as a test set. Um, so I'm going to run the cell. And here, like I mentioned earlier, is we're using the PyTorch data loader to generate uh, a training data set loader and a validation data set loader. And then we're having batch size of four, so every time you say, give me the next one, it will give you uh, four four records or four observations. and and the processing is uh, a parallel, parallelism is, is two. So let, let's run this. And then as you can see, when we print out uh, you know, the, the first row, it basically gives us uh, four record uh, each for user, movie, and ratings. So here we create a model. Uh, like we said, we're passing the number of unique users, the number of unique movies. And then we go through Atom, which is a um, uh, which is a modified version of gradient descent. And then here we have a, a scheduler to say uh, we, here's how we want to adjust our learning rate and loss functions MSE. So run that cell, and then um, here we print out the unique number of classes, uh, movies, and and kind of see some of the dimensions. So here what I like to do is manually run a forward path and by doing that it, it kind of makes it easier to see what the shape of, of data look like at each step uh, because a lot of small bugs when you write the model um, is it, coming from not writing some of these dimensions correctly. Um, so let's just run this. So, so as you can see when we say okay give me right the first uh, the first data, um, the user, it's, it's a length of four because the batch size is four, and for movie, it's similar. So here we, we're, uh, and then here we define the, our two, the, the embedding, the PyTorch embedding method. So after I run this cell, you can see what embedding, uh, the embedded space look like. So it's four times 34 because 
the we're using data loader so every time we we we, we, we want the next item it actually gives us four items and then each item has the length of 30 32 because we want the uh, embedding vector to have length 32 so that's why it's 432 and similarly for movie is 432 and then and then here um, I'm, I'm concatenating them and I push them through uh, the uh, linear layer to see the output so so as you can see it's uh, 64 because uh, earlier um, as you can see the dimension is 4 times 32 and I want it to concatenate dimension 1 so 32 plus 32 gives you 64 and that's the um, basically the concatenation output and then after I sent through the uh, linear layer then I'm getting four outputs because um, each concatenated um, row or, or vector is giving should give me one output right that's how how we define the model right here 60 and then and I will get one output so because the data loader size is four then I'm getting four outputs so this is uh, I'm, I'm running basically the the data um, one row or one batch of data loaded data directly through through model and here I said no grab means I don't want to accumulate this uh, for for the um, back propagation um, for for future training so it's basically a evaluation mode so as you can see here's the evaluation results um, look like this it looks pretty off because we didn't really train anything um, here we're, we're taking a quick look at what the uh, Actual rating should look like right three three two two and here it's very very off because this is a uh, uh, basically the first round of output without any training. So after that, uh, here's how we can run the uh, the training. Oh, by the way, here here is uh, this thing. Uh, we need to reshape the rating because as you can see, the by default the rating shape is just uh, a vector four, so the size is four. But we want the shape to be four times one, so we do four, and a negative one here just means default whatever, right? So um, it will basically compute for you given the input size. Uh, if I want it to be dimension of four times something, then that something will be uh, will be one. So minus one is just saying asking PyTorch to compute that the other dimension for you. Um, so as you can see here, we have. Uh, the new dimension becomes uh, four times one, and then this basically matches the uh, the output dimension of of our model. So here here's the training loop. Uh, it's it's very very similar to what we just went through in in the forward path. Um, I'm only doing one apoke because the performance seems to be pretty good. So I'm just doing one apoke, and then for every five thousand observations or five thousand steps I'm going to plot the loss for, uh, the loss so we can kind of see uh, a very nice graph of how loss is slowly going down uh, as, as we're going through um, uh, going through the data so a poke zero loss at uh, a step uh, 5,000 is, is this is pretty big and you will slow see it slowly go down um, and I think uh, you you will come to skip forward since I'm recording this in real time uh, we'll have to wait for a little bit but you will come to, sk to skip forward uh, when when this finish
So now we finish the training, and then as you can see, this is the plot of the loss. It, it basically dropped, um, and then it stays around 0 0.05 uh, for the mean square error. So the next we're going over uh, the actual evaluation of the model. So one way to evaluate is a uh, root mean square error. Uh, let's go to the slide to see what the formula look like. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically say uh, what is the uh, the actual value minus the uh, predicted value, and then you put a square and you say for all the observations, what is the average of the uh, of the error between my uh, actual versus uh, predicted. And then that's why it, it's pretty reflective of the name root mean square error. So here we're basically doing that calculation uh, on, on the validation data. Um, so let's run the cell. And here I printed out uh, each for each batch for easy debug, uh, just in case it, it looks strange, but it, it looks good. Uh, and if you scroll all the way down, you will see the value of, uh, of the root mean square error. Uh, it's uh, 0 0.46, so this is not bad given the scale is, uh, is 0 to 5. Um, the other way to, the other very popular evaluation matrix is, is this thing called recall at K. So let's go to slides to see uh, what it means. Uh, if you're not familiar with the, the, the typical recall precision uh, accuracy in information retrieval, uh, uh, look it up. But uh, this should be uh, similar. Uh, basically, for recall a, a K, it, it basically says for for each user, uh, what is the total number of uh, relevant items, and then and then out of that, so say if I recommend ten items, right, and then there are only three items that are actually relevant to user. Relevant here, I we can define as uh, has a has a rating over three point five. Then we are, we're taking the total number of, of recommended items. Uh, you know, if we recommend ten, they're actually relevant to user divided by the total number of relevant user uh, relevant items for that user. And precision is similar. It has the uh, has the same um, the the top part is the same. The, is the difference the bottom part is the, the number of items recommend. Um, so that that's the only difference. So so we can go to the code here. Uh, well here we'll basically generate for for each user we are generating uh, this sort of the uh, the actual versus predicted hat uh, sorry actual versus predicted list for each user, and then and then from there then we can sort by the y hat, which is the predicted value uh, in the in the uh, descending order, which will be our recommended list. Uh, so let's run the cell. Um, and then here I printed out the uh, user ID, movie ID, and then the predicted versus the actual rating, uh, just for debugging purpose. And here I run through that the uh, the dictionary of list um, above to to generate to generate precisions and recalls for each of the user. And here I'm using threshold of 3.5 and I'm using a K, I'm recommending 100 items. Um, so let's run through this. So after this finishes, then we can say, that, so the overall uh, recall at K and precision at K is just averaged uh, by, by the number of, uh, of users uh, unique users. Uh, so if we run this, uh, we can see the precision uh, is uh, 0 0.558. So out of the uh, 100 items I recommended, 58% uh, are, um, are relevant. And then out of the 100 items I recommended, 55% are actually, there are actually 55% of items um, that are actually out of the, uh, the the total relevant item in, in my in my test set, so you can play with this k. So if you use k as uh, as as ten, then you will see something slightly different. That you will see the precision obviously uh, goes up um, because uh, your total number of k is smaller, uh, ver and while the, in the meantime the recall uh, goes down right because the the total number of items recommended goes down. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer all of them. 
So uh, also don't forget to uh, subscribe uh, and hit the like button, and I will make more uh, more good content about uh, deep learning and recommendation system. So thanks for watching.